As a follow-up to my Overloaded Champions video, let's talk about overpowered abilities, as in abilities that are so insanely good that they basically carry the champion, and chances are if you took it away and replaced it with something else, it would completely ruin their viability. There are over 700 abilities in the game, and as new champions are released, we've witnessed the game go from simple attacks like Garen Q or Annie Q, to crazy mechanics nested within crazy mechanics like Yone's E or just Aphelios' entire kit. It's been a wild ride, hard to imagine someone like Dr. Mundo is in the same game as Viego. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I'd imagine if someone who quit back in 2010 or 2011 came back 10 years later, this would be pretty much unrecognizable. So I wanted to talk about the evolution of abilities in League and analyze certain ones that, in my opinion, might be a little too crazy. For clarification, unlike the Omni Stone and On Record video, this one will be opinionated a little bit. But as usual, I'll be backing up my claims with statistics and data to the best of my ability. Before we begin, just want to give a quick shout out to Gif Your Game for sponsoring the video. Gif Your Game is a software that makes it really easy for you to record and share high quality gameplay clips. They sort of operate in the same fashion as screenshotting softwares like ShareX. At the push of a button, you can capture a clip of the last 15 seconds or so in almost any game, and as the name implies, it creates a GIF to post anywhere you want, Reddit, Discord, what have you. Conveniently, GIF your game's high-end PCs will take care of all the work, so your computer doesn't have to expend any energy to make the clip. Best part is that they have an auto-gif feature which automatically records any clip based on a certain detection. For example, if you play League and you score a triple kill, quadra, penta, this app makes a clip without you having to preemptively record the game or go into the replays to look for it manually. They're still working on adding a bunch of new features in order to make it an all-purpose gif recording software, so if you're a fan of sharing funny, impromptu moments in games that you play, click the link in the description below and give it a try. It would help the channel out a lot, but without any further ado, let's get back into the video. Between the start of the game to around Season 2, most champions in League were designed under a conventional pattern. They usually had a main damaging ability, another offered some form of protection or a buff, and they would have a wild card ability which would either be a secondary damaging tool, hard crowd control, or a dash. Passive abilities, as you know, were also pretty simple at the time. They entailed one specific function affecting the champion's gameplay. For instance, let's take a look at Ash. Ash's W was the damage, Q was the attack speed buff, and Hawk shot her E was a long range vision scouting tool. Pretty self explanatory. Her passive made all her attacks and her W do reduced crit damage, but in exchange, she offered an on hit frozen mallet basically. Another example would be Jax. Jax's passive made him gain bonus attack speed while attacking, his W was the main damaging ability, E was his primary defensive tool, which also doubled as a stun. Q was his mobility tool, and finally, his ultimate gave him a super bonk with every third hit, and a big buff to armor and magic resist. Every champion, old and new, has a defining ability. Most people know Ash for her stun arrow, most people know Jax for his counter strike, but neither champion makes you die inside whenever you see them insta locked on the enemy team. Okay, maybe if you're playing Trindamir or something, but that's usually just matchup dependent. However, it's become clear that some champions have skills that are more than just a single instance of damage or a shield. There are abilities in the game so notorious, it practically defines their champion's entire reputation. What's funny is that more often than not, said ability isn't their ultimate, which you usually expect to be their ace in the hole. It's not so much Yasuo's last breath that grinds people's gears, it's more his windfall, at least for AD carry means. I should mention, overpowered skills are not exclusive to new releases, but they're increasing in frequency from new champion to new champion. Not counting reworks, out of the 20 or so newest champions added to the game, 13 of them have one such ability that often frustrates many players. Before I go into some of them, let me first outline the criteria for how I decide what goes into this category. An ability is considered overpowered if it does at least two of four things. It covers a vast amount of practical situations, effectively making it an all-purpose offensive or defensive tool. There's no possible way for said ability to be countered, circumvented, or disabled within its boundary or time frame of effect. It contributes incredible pressure in a fight relative to what is required to use it to its fullest capacity, or if its effectiveness remains relevant regardless of the champion's conditions, meaning if it still does the same exact thing whether you're 10 and 0 or 0 and 10. I know this is a rather broad criteria, but generally speaking, most abilities automatically fail on the first one because they're usually designed to perform a set task, and only when that task is necessary. To start, let's bring up Pike's Death From Below, one of the most overpowered abilities in the game. In fact, that's literally the only reason he's such a scary dude to deal with, and why so many people hate him. There aren't many champions with true execute abilities. 
Pike and Urgot are the only two in the game who straight up pull this off. Yes, I'm aware there are others like Garen, Cholgoth, Darius, Sakali, Riven and such who have execute type abilities in air quotes, but those don't actually kill the target. They just do more damage the lower your health is to the point where it pretty much guarantees death. But you still can protect yourself with shields and whatnot, whereas executes just cut right through that. There are three things about this ability that make people hate it so much. The first is that it's AoE. Unlike Urgot's ultimate death from below can execute multiple champions simultaneously, meaning if a bunch of enemy team members are low health and together they're all going to be taken out. The second is that it resets. Darius's ultimate does have a reset component as well, but to do a lot of damage with it you need 5 stacks, which means you'll have to attack a target at least once to get the bleed before dunking them. Secondly, Darius is a juggernaut and pretty slow, even with Stridebreaker, and Noxian Guillotine has only 475 units of range. Pike's ultimate has 750, and he's one of the fastest supports in the game thanks to Phantom Undertow and Ghostwater Dive. Garen, Cho'Goth, and Darius often struggle to execute priority targets because they get easily kited. But even if you're playing really far back, Pike can swim right past everyone and deep six you in the blink of an eye. The third is that each successful execute is 600 gold if Pike lands the killing blow, or 900 gold if the champion dies during the half a second he channels his ultimate. Normally, 5 kills equals 2250 gold at max, 450 each. But with Pike's ultimate, a single ace on the enemy team can give you over a 5000 gold advantage. One fight. That's all it takes, just one fight with his ultimate. Pike would be literally so much worse of a champion if Death From Below didn't reset at all, but the fact that it does is what makes this ability so incredibly broken, even for an ultimate. One more example, this next one is not an ultimate but may as well be. Yone's Soul Unbound is arguably the most broken basic ability in the game. Maybe aside from Camille's Q. It's a dash which means you can go through walls with it, you get 10-30% to bonus movement speed for 5 seconds, and you essentially gain a 25-35% to bonus damage buff during that time. Well, technically you don't actually deal bonus damage, it's just a portion of all damage you deal while in spirit form is dealt again when you cast back, but yeah. Soul Unbound functions almost exactly like Zed's ultimate, on a 10 second cooldown at max rank. With this ability, you can dash in and go for a quick trade combo then dash back out in lane, or in the mid to late game you can use this to chase after a mispositioned enemy, assassinate them before blinking back to safety so you don't get caught out yourself. This attack also completely cleanses any debuffs on him, including Drowsy, effectively making Yone, Zoe, and Lilia's hardest counter. Early game the bonus damage doesn't amount to much because you don't have any attack damage, attack speed, or crit chance, but once you reach the late game when Yone can use Q 6 times in 5 seconds, he basically becomes an assassin with teamfighting potential thanks to this ability alone. And really the only weakness it carries is that you can't use it to escape since exiting spirit form is compulsory. But most of the time, you don't need to escape on Yone because you can explode the entire enemy team by straight up speed blitzing them down. And given it's decently low cooldown at max rank, this ability can also be used to scout enemies by eing over a wall and blinking back the second you see someone. You can use this to dodge attacks, to increase your damage, to chase after targets, to assassinate, to teamfight. Given how much distance you can cover within 5 seconds thanks to the bonus move speed and his multiple dashes, it may actually just be better than Zed's death mark in all honesty. Those are just two examples of many abilities, but what I wanted to talk about in more detail was whether or not these skills create a toxic dynamic for the champion. In my opinion, depending on how they're made, overpowered abilities are fine to have so long as the power budget is compromised elsewhere. If a champion has a really powerful ability designed to deal with a lot of situations, they should be easily countered in the situations they aren't equipped to deal with. In a vacuum it's easy to assume abilities are really busted, but we have to consider how strong the rest of a champion's kit is. Fizz's playful trickster is one of the most annoying attacks in the game, but Fizz as a champion is not without very critical weaknesses. Sure, that one skill alone gives him a ton of in-combat mobility and he basically can dodge any attack that comes his way, but it doesn't completely remove his weaknesses as an assassin. He still has windows of vulnerability after burning his entire combo. Yasuo's Windwall is the bane of any projectile champion's existence, but he's still very susceptible to burst damage and or melee champions, meaning this ability in and of itself doesn't make him the most obnoxious champion to deal with. Well, he still is, just not the worst. But there are abilities that are so incredibly stacked, they screw over too many champions without opening up a moment of vulnerability anywhere else. One that I can think of right away is Cassiopeia's Miasma. For some champions, mobility is their entire gameplay. In other words, being grounded is no different than being perma-stunned for champions like Riven, Zed, Callista, etc. 
The issue with miasma is that it not only grounds anyone stuck in it, but it has such a massive area of effect and also slows you by up to 80%. This ability can cover an entire choke point in the jungle for up to 5 seconds, effectively rendering any champion who uses mobility to attack completely useless. You also can't use flash or any items that can dash. The biggest difficulty battle mages face is that they have to space themselves carefully since they're much closer to enemy champions than artillery or burst mages. Anivia, Karthus, Aurelian Soul, Rise, and Victor can deal monstrous amounts of DPS, but are easy targets to burst down if a diver or assassin can get close enough. But Cassiopeia completely shuts down so many champions that normally counter her subclass conceptually speaking. And it's not like being an anti-melee battle mage exacerbates her range weakness, because she doesn't struggle against artillery or burst champions any harder than someone like Anivia does. In comparison, Singed's Mega Adhesive is just strictly worse because it covers a much smaller area and slows for less, but it's a lot more balanced because of that. Sure, it's still annoying to deal with, but no one looks at him and immediately thinks of his puddle. Akali's Twilight Shroud would be another example. I still cannot believe at one point she could use his Under Tower and become untargetable to the point where her W was basically on record on steroids. Usually the line between an overpowered ability being acceptable and unacceptable is just how much players don't like a champion specifically because of that ability, and how much attention that ability draws in a game. Yes, Yone's E is overpowered, but it's not an instant win button. People are still more afraid of his ultimate than they are his E, generally speaking. But Pike's ultimate completely changes the way the enemy team has to play, just because of the sheer threat of its existence. Urgot's execute can only hit one person, and it's also pretty easy to miss, not to mention it only works on a champion below 25% health. Doesn't matter if they have 7,000 or 2,000. Pike's ultimate is almost an instant cast, can hit multiple people, and if he's full AD and lethality, he can easily execute squishy champions over half health from like a full screen away. It makes every player on the enemy team who's not a tank or bruiser extremely terrified to walk up because even a little bit of damage is an instant death if Pike is nearby. It's that there's tons of instances where a person can feel totally useless in a game not because they're feeding or because the enemy team is better, but because of one single ability that the enemy team has. Again, it's hard to justify which abilities are objectively toxic and which ones aren't. A Kled or Aatrox main might look at Fiora and think she's a devil's spoiled daughter thanks to her W, while someone like Quinn may look at Fiora as one of the easiest matchups in the game. Someone like Mordekaiser might look at Vayne's entire kit as Riot's worst designed champion, but Talon can one-shot her without batting an eye. It's all relative, but there are certain abilities in the game that draw resentment from a large portion of the community. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about overpowered abilities and which ones you dislike the most. I don't think it's exactly a good idea to straight up remove them from the game since, like it or not, that ability is what makes up the champion's playstyle. All the same, it's not exactly a good thing when a character's entire identity is just that one ability. If you enjoyed the video, a rating would be much appreciated, and if you'd like to see more content like this, consider subbing to the channel. Also, check out the description down below for links to my Discord and social media, as well as a playlist containing all my discussion videos if you'd like to watch more. Shoutouts once again to Gif Your Game for sponsoring the video. If you can take a look at the link down below, that would support the channel a whole bunch. But thanks all so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for the next one. Take care.